Now, our next guest will be our last speaker. I never thought I would meet this person or introduce him today. It's an honor to be introducing him because I heard over and over about how he fights to do what's right, no matter what. Please welcome to the stage, Anthony Anucci. Thank you so much. What an incredibly uplifting day this has been. And dear, you thank you for putting Andre before me. What a tough act to follow. Uh, he's amazing. Everybody's been amazing. I just am so blown away by what I've seen and heard today, as all of you are. Uh, so much credit goes to not just all the speakers. It's clear you worked so hard on delivering very powerful messages, but all the line staff that helped make this possible, Superintendent Shanley, all his executive team, all the people, all the guests that are here supporting this. Uh, this has been amazing. And certainly Delia, uh, Superintendent Shanley would refer to you as his favorite painted allure. <laughs> <laughs> We love you. We really do. <laughs> this is actually the third time I've been at a TED event behind the walls of a maximum security prison. Third time. And uh, it's just every one of them has been incredibly uplifting and, and powerful. Uh, for all the outside guests that are here, by show of hands, how many is this? the first time you've been in a maximum security prison? Quite a few, okay. Now, I should ask, is this anything like what you have seen on television in any of those made-for-TV prison movies? I suspect not at all, right? Every prison movie has every cliche, every stereotype dating back to the James Cagney movies. And I'm sure half of the people in this room are saying, who the hell is Jimmy Cagney? <laughs> I already feel ancient, but uh, the messages that you heard should, should reveal to everyone, every outside guest here, what we in corrections have, have known for some time. That is that there are a lot of people in prison who, while they have done bad things, are not bad people. In fact, they have come a long way. They are very good people, and they can do a lot of good for the world. Uh, it's, it's just amazing when you think about it that uh, at the end of the day, incarcerated people are just that, people, like all of us here, right? They're smart. They can work hard. They're thoughtful. They can do a lot of good things. And at the end of the day, the hope for them is the same hope that each one of us has as individuals, that we are better than the worst thing we have ever done in our life, whether that's a crime or whether it's a serious moral failure, failing that we're better than whatever the worst thing is that we've done in our lives. You know, part of my job as commissioner is to help put a human face on the incarcerated individual, right? That's a big part of my job in so many different ways. But another part of my job is to help put a human face on the people that work in our prisons. And today, I think you got to see that, right? So congratulations to everybody who worked on this TED event for helping to put a human face on the incarcerated men and women and on the, on the staff that work in, in our facilities. It really is an incredible feat you've accomplished. You know, when you take people from very different backgrounds, and you put them together in the same physical environment for a period of time, um, something incredibly interesting happens most of the time. Uh, people really learn that they're not so different, that they do have a shared humanity, and they come to uh, appreciate one another. They develop empathy, which is an appreciation and understanding of the lived experience of another human being. And that's what happens here inside our correctional facilities often. And you heard a couple of uh, descriptions by that during size remarks. For example, when he talked about the program he started where incarcerated men take a criminal justice course side by side with assistant district attorneys. And talk about people that come from very, very different 
spates, right? You know, the DA is on one side and defendants on the other, and you know, they're very antagonistic. And yet here they are many years later studying together, taking a criminal justice course. And I've been there at their graduations to hear them jointly present on a concept uh, that they've studied. Sai also mentioned the, the Puppies Behind Bars program. There again, you have people from very different backgrounds coming together. Because right now, we are training uh, Labradors to be service dogs for police departments, including the NYPD and other police departments. And you saw an example of that recently. In order for them to get the dogs, they have to work with the incarcerated men and women for two weeks. They come to the prison, they learn the instructions from the men that have taught their dogs, and then at graduations, they receive the dogs. And many of them are for, for you know, services because they have PTSD, or these are dogs that are given to the employee assistance units for uh, officers that may be suffering from uh, trauma and feel depressed and suicidal. Many of them are for the people that are going to be policing in the communities. To have a Labrador with them helps bridge the gap right now between communities that may be distrustful of them. I think you saw one of the best examples of what a program like that can do because recently at St. Patrick's Cathedral, you saw those dogs at the funerals of the two police officers that had been gunned down. And there they were, these dogs inside St. Pat's Cathedral, not only giving comfort to everybody in the congregation, but to an entire city whose hearts were broken over that tragedy. And that's a program where people from very different backgrounds come together and uh, are able to work together and really understand each other. There is no question that right now, society in many ways seems to be coming apart at the seams, right? There's so much vitriol and animosity and anger, and we seem as individuals to want to retreat safely to our own corners, not even willing to engage with those that we don't relate to or those we dislike. Um, you know, the, there's an old saying I think we're all familiar with, uh, any mule can kick a barn down, but only a carpenter can build one. And metaphorically speaking, what society needs right now are a lot more carpenters. But what they have to build are not barns, what they have to build are bridges. Bridges to connect all of us to our shared humanity, bridges to connect communities from one to another, bridges to make the world a better place. And I am so proud and appreciative for Ted coming together today and really helping to make the Xaki Correction Facility, this place, this date, um, a wonderful experience for all. Congratulations for your shared humanity. You really hit, a, hit it out of the park, everybody. Thank you.